Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how fat and carbohydrate intake influences body composition. Fat and carbohydrate are simply two of the three primary macronutrients, with the other being protein. These three macronutrients are used as fuel sources for energy production. However, as we mentioned earlier in this video series, protein is a very poor fuel source which doesn't provide energy at a fast enough rate to be useful for exercise. Therefore, our two primary fuel sources for exercise are fat and carbohydrate. We should also understand that these three macronutrients ultimately all contribute to total calorie intake. Protein and carbohydrate contain four calories per gram, while fat contains nine calories per gram, making it the most calorie dense macronutrient. This will have implications for body composition, which we will discuss later in this video. To understand the influence of fat and carbohydrate on body composition, we first need to understand some basic physiology. Each macronutrient is consumed, transported and stored in a unique way. We have already covered this process for protein in a previous video, so let's now cover what happens to fat and carbohydrate when they are consumed. So when dietary fat is consumed, it is broken down into what we call fatty acids. These fatty acids are basically how dietary fat is transported in the blood. As they circulate in the blood, they are readily available for use for energy if needed, and if they aren't used, they are stored for later use. Not surprisingly, fat is stored in the body as adipose tissue, or in other words, body fat. Stored adipose tissue can also be broken back down into fatty acids and used as fuel for energy production. Carbohydrates follow a similar process. When carbohydrate is consumed, it is broken down into glucose, which is transported around the body via the bloodstream. Blood glucose is readily available for use as fuel for energy production, otherwise it is stored in the body for later use. Carbohydrates are stored in the muscles and liver as glycogen, which can be broken down and used for fuel when needed. However, once muscle and liver glycogen stores are full, excess carbohydrate is also stored as body fat. Now that we understand the basics of how fat and carbohydrate are transported and stored, let's have a look at how these fuels are used during rest and exercise. As we can see in this graph, both fat and carbohydrate are always being used as fuel at all times. However, during rest and very low intensity exercise, we can see here that fat is preferentially used as a fuel over carbohydrate. As exercise intensity increases, carbohydrate is preferentially used as a fuel over fat because it can provide energy at a much faster rate than fat. So what influence does the intake of fat and carbohydrate have on body composition? In terms of muscle mass, fat and carbohydrate intake probably doesn't have much direct influence. However, it may be indirectly important. Because fat and carbohydrate are the primary fuel sources for energy production during exercise, it may have an impact on our training sessions. In particular, we need enough carbohydrate in our diet to fuel our resistance training sessions. Because resistance training is an anaerobic activity, it will be highly reliant on the use of carbohydrate as a primary fuel source. While the body can create glucose from fat, it is a very inefficient process and simply won't provide the same rate of energy production as stored glycogen. In turn, if we have adequate carbohydrate to fuel our training, performance will be better in the gym, and our training stimulus will be more hypertrophic. Resistance training is not a highly energy expensive activity, so carbohydrate timing and glycogen loading is not of significant importance. We should just ensure that we are consuming enough carbohydrate each day so that performance is not inhibited. In terms of body fat, carbohydrate and fat intake certainly have a direct impact. This is because both macronutrients ultimately contribute to overall calorie intake, and an excess of either nutrient will result in fat storage. So regardless of what combination of fat and carbohydrate we intake, if the overall energy intake results in a calorie surplus, then we will gain body fat. Furthermore, fat and carbohydrate intake may have an influence on hunger satiety. This is because fat has 9 calories per gram, while carbohydrate only has 4 calories per gram. So if we consume a higher fat intake, our food volume will probably be lower because it is more calorie dense. Therefore, consuming a higher carbohydrate diet may allow a greater physical volume of food to be consumed. This is likely to be more satiating and may help with adherence to a diet during a calorie deficit. On the other hand, trainees struggling to gain weight in a surplus may want to preference a higher fat intake to allow more calories to be consumed with a lower food volume. Another quick consideration we should make is the impact of fat and carbohydrate on health. We need a minimum amount of each macronutrient for essential bodily functions. 
While this goes beyond the scope of this video, a small amount of dietary fat is required for hormonal regulation and organ function. Furthermore, carbohydrate is the primary fuel source for the brain and other organs, meaning that we probably need a minimum amount to function effectively. Therefore, it is probably not a good idea to consume a very low intake of either nutrient because it may sacrifice the function of some essential tissues. So what practical recommendations can we conclude from this information? Well, first we should understand that once we hit our total daily protein goals, the intake of fat and carbohydrate will make up the remainder of our calorie intake. The combination of fat and carbohydrate for these remaining calories is less important than the overall energy balance. However, it may still be important to consider how we distribute our calories between the two macronutrients. Trainees probably want to favor a higher carbohydrate intake and a lower fat intake to ensure gym performance is of high quality and for the satiety effects of consuming a higher food volume. Therefore, as a practical recommendation, trainees should meet a minimum fat intake to ensure organs and essential tissues are able to function properly. This minimum amount is probably around 0.5 grams per kilogram of body weight, but between 0.5 to 1.25 grams per kilogram of body weight is a more realistic fat intake goal. After this has been met, the remainder of calories can come from carbohydrate. Furthermore, trainees can adjust fat and carbohydrate intake slightly based on food preferences and what allows them to adhere the most consistently. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.